Hello everybody and welcome to my new Let's Play Star Trek Online series that is going to deal directly with the KDF. Dun dun dun. KDF stands for the Klingon Defense Force. So there are basically two factions in Star Trek Online you can play. Federation or Klingon. And under the Klingon faction they have several different aliens that you can play that are different than Federation. And in fact, they're all unique to KDF. So in my last video, I pretty much explained that I'm going to replay all of the KDF missions in order on my already made KDF character. Well, I decided after reading some comments and, and so forth, why don't I go ahead and at least first show you starting a new KDF character and go through the whole you know customization of the character uh, starting off choosing your career uh, the aliens that you can be going through your uh, you know the, your first ship that you get and showing you uh, what level it starts you off at and then going through the tutorial and whatever else the KDF stuff has at the very beginning. Now, I have to admit something before we start here real quick. It has been an extremely long time since I have played on KDF. I only have one character on the KDF side that I've leveled up to max, and it was a long time ago. It was over a year ago. So it has been a long time since I have created a new character and gone through the whole process of KDF. Um, now that the game has gone free to play, a lot of stuff has changed about that. And um, also it means I've only been through the missions once. I've, uh, I've, I've, I haven't done, I don't think there's one mission that I've done twice. I think I've only done each mission once on KDF side. So I'm pretty much, <laughs> gonna be doing this on the fly myself you can just consider me a noob because um, I, I don't remember the missions right I remember some of them vaguely there's like some really cool ones toward the end that I remember but all the beginning ones I don't remember them at all so uh, pretty much this is gonna be almost as new for me as it is for you guys watching this but I figured in this first video, let's start a new character and go through the tutorial process, right? Then I can give you a tour of um, the first city and all that good stuff. And then what I'll do is I'll switch characters to my main character on KDF. And I will use her to play all the missions. And the reasoning for that is because if I were to build a new character and actually play it, and level it up on KDF like I did Federation, it would take me a lot longer because I have to, I'd have to do a lot of stuff off screen. Whereas on the Federation side, we could basically play all the main missions and get to max level cap. But on KDF, it's a lot different, or at least when I played it the last time. Um, I had to do a ton, and I mean a ton of dailies, um, and just all kinds of crazy stuff just to get to that next grade or that next level that I need to get to because there are not a lot of missions. There's not enough missions to level you to max uh, level. Um, and whereas there was like 74, I mean, we'll count them here, but there's not going to be a lot uh, on the KDF. So um, I think it would be easier, at least on my part, to just use my main character and replay those missions in order. But I can at least show you guys the tutorial and what it means to create a new character. And as I go through um, each mission and do everything, I will also show you how you can build a good KDF character and uh, a good ship build and all that good stuff, just like you can do on Federation. So, all right, without much ado, here we go. Um, you get to choose your career, just like Federation. It's either engineering, science, or tactical. And first of all, as you can see, it's all red and gloomy. Ooh, we got our empty bridge officer seat here. And um, everything on KDF is red. Uh, one thing I really like about the KDF side is the computer voice. It's pretty awesome. 
All right, so you get to choose engineering, science, or tactical. When you click on one of these, it tells you what that career does, right? You are an engineering officer in the Klingon Defense Force. You support your ship and crew by blah, 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 blah. You can read all that. Science officer. Um, basically the same thing. You are a science officer. You use your skills and knowledge to support your ship and crew, blah, blah, blah. Or tactical officer. You are a tactical officer. You are on the front lines of every battle using your skills to defeat anyone who would oppose the Klingon Empire. Um, so if you want to melee a lot, if you want to just do the most DPS, if you're a DPS fiend and uh, all you want is mad DPS, a uh, Kling nothing better, better than a Klingon tactical officer. Um, because we are familiar with engineering on the Federation side, I figure let's start an engineering character on KDF side and so that way you'll see some similarities between them and um, of course you can always choose science or tactical or whatever you want so choose next and then I have the join trill purchase so the join trill is actually both Federation and Klingon so you could be a join trill on Federation or Klingon um, of course you can be a Klingon you can be a Gorn I don't even know. Yeah, Gorn don't even have a gender. Gorn just have male. <laughs> but you can have a Klingon female or a Klingon male. Uh, a Gorn male. Join Trill. A Lethian, which looks like that. And all you have is male. The Liberated Borg Klingon. Remember, I had that um, Liberated Borg uh, as for my Federation officer. Well, that's also um, on KDF as well. So I have that on KDF side, and basically it'd just be a liberated Klingon, liberated Borg Klingon. But it has that Borg Nanite, sufficient captain, and it also gives you um, the option to have that neural blast, which um, I, I like. Um, you can be a Nausicaan, a male Nausicaan, an Orion, of course. You can have an, be an, uh, an Orion female, classic uh, green, and they have this cool power called seductive which is a confuse and placate resist or reduce threat generation it's pretty cool power they have or you can be an alien and customize your own whatever for the purpose of this tutorial just for this first uh, couple of uh, maybe this may be one or two uh, videos I'm not quite sure but just for this little introduction let's just start a plain old Klingon male okay and we'll do that just to go through the tutorial Alright, so Klingon Mail, um, next. It comes automatically with accurate and... Oh no, this is what... This is what it comes with. It comes with honorable and warrior. So... You can't undo that. And it suggests accurate and stubborn. Um, of course, you can customize that and actually take accurate and stubborn off and choose something else like I might want a warp theorist for space and then I might want uh, let's see sure-footed is a good one sturdy is a good one probably do sturdy and so basically um, this would be our character and um, so let's you can go through the various options you can choose you know you can choose the predefined uh, variants that he has or you can go to advance and you know totally customize everything about them and the Klingons they have um, details that the Federation does not have um, here's a Klingon eye patch for example Mouth accessory. Uh, customize the body. Um, that's pretty much standard stuff. Customize the outfit. They have default outfits you can go with. Of course, you can uh, go advanced, and um, they have like wrist attachments, like wrist attach left and right. You have different gauntlet options you can see on his uh, left hand there, or his right hand if you're looking right at him. Um, so it changes things like that. Um, collar, this has 
collar settings, uh, shoulder pad left and right. So you can see there's more, ac there's actually more costume options on the Klingon side. And if you choose like an Orion or something like that, like a uh, one of the female or male Orions, probably I'd go with female Orion. Uh, they have a lot of options for the collars and the, and the wrists and everything. Um, they have a, they really have a lot of options. Um, so basically, let's just go with you know whatever he has default for right now. Uh, just to just to get this started and to show you guys the tutorial. So let's give him a name. Uh, let's call him uh, Captain Fluffy. Uh, and the, uh, on the Klingon side, the ships are not USS. Obviously, they're IKS. So the IKS um, for a ball. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? Um, and of course, you can fill in a bio and his formal name and all that good stuff. But I want to get straight to the tutorial and um, go through all that. Alright, so okay, there's a ton of stuff going on in my screen right now. <laughs> so, a lot of this stuff are accolades and things that I have because of my time in the game. Like I have the 700 day, uh, day vet going and uh, I got the 800 day vet telling me I can get a Mugato and uh, all that good stuff. So, all right, first of all, this is basically where you'll start out after all that. This this uh, bulletin usually won't be here. That's their spotlight on the foundry. But this is basically where the Klingon um, side starts. Whereas on the Federation side, you started in that tutorial and you got the fight Borg and, um, you know, deal with that threat over the Vega colony. Here on KDF, um, you're pretty much at first uh, not first prime. It's um, what's it called? Um, you're at um, first city, which is the uh, city uh, basically where you do everything at, and that's basically where you start the game at. Um, this is just telling me I have that 300 day one. So this is where you start out. Um, you start out with a batleth. Uh, you got a actually yeah. That's the thing to notice is right here. You don't start out at ensign or um, or even lieutenant anymore. Um, they start you out at Commander 20. So you s automatically start out a um, KDF character at level 20. So that's a huge boost right there. That's like that's like 20 grades for free right there. So a Federation, you have a lot more to build up. But with KDF, um, you're already at level 20. And of course, level max is 50. So you're only 30 away from the, the, uh, the max level uh, there that you can be so we're uh, com we're already a commander basically and they give us stuff for that of course we have our chat box here um, we have a um, mark 5 batleth or we can switch to a mark 5 disruptor um, okay and it looks like we've already got a kit too and uh, stuff. So let's hit y the first thing I want to do is hit you and see what uh, we've got in our inventory. They actually put in our inventory um, a pretty good amount of stuff starting the game off with. So look what you start off with. You start off with a um, disruptor um, full auto rifle Mark V and it's green. It's a, it's a uncommon so it's got damage modifier. So check that out. It's pretty awesome. And you get Disruptor Dual Pistols, Mark V, with a CRTH, and you get a, uh, and that's green, and then with this one you get Disruptor Pulse Wave Assault, Mark V, but that's just a common. Then you get a Disruptor Compression pul uh, Pistol, Mark V, Damage, and then Disruptor Compression Pistol, Mark V, Common, and you get a Personal Shield, Mark V, another Personal Shield, Mark V, this one has Regeneration, this one has, um, disruptor um, resistance. Uh, this one is just a regular personal shield mark 5, personal shield mark 5. You got an armor mark 5 that regenerates your uh, health points and you got a uh, compensating armor mark 5 with that improves your health points and an energy harness mark 5 
with phaser and disruptor resistance, and then just a regular energy dampening ARPA Mark V. And the idea, the goal of the reason why you have all this stuff starting out is so you can equip your bridge officers. So right off the bat, KDF gives you a lot of um, options here, apparently, um, starting off on your character. And they've already, look, they've already built my character up. I have a Mark V personal shield with capacity. I have a energy dampening armor, Mark V, with hit points or, or health points, so that increases my maximum health points. And I do have a kit, it's an engineering kit, they give you the Bunker Fabrication Mark V common kit, which gives you Force Field Dome 1, a Medical Generator 1, and Turret Fabrication 2. So there you go, that's a really good kit starting off the game. <laughs> and then of course my weapons. And then they even give you some uh, power cells, shield recharge, and hypos. So wow, they they do give you a lot um, starting off. So I mean, I already have you know stuff starting off, and I don't even have bridge officers yet. But yet I have stuff to equip on them once I get them, and I'm equipped pretty decently starting off. Um, Commander twenty. Um, let's see what I've done to my ship. Okay, I start off with a uh, bird of prey. That is the first ship you apparently start off with now. And I got three weapon slots on the front. And they've put a photon torpedo, Mark V common, a disruptor dual cannons, Mark V common, and the dual disruptor beam bank, Mark V. Then they've given me a Mark V deflector engine, and then they've given me a Mark V covariant, uncommon, so it has capacity shield. So basically, they've given you a shield that has a lot of capacity at this level, um, starting off the game. And then on the back, they have a turret, Mark V damage, and a photon torpedo on the aft as well. And then they've given me just an auxiliary battery, a shield battery. They've even given me consoles. I've got a uh, Mark V Victorium alloy, so it's uh, kinetic damage and all energy damage resistance. And even another hole plating. Uh, phaser damage resistance and disruptor damage resistance. And then they've given me a uh, flow capacitor for for Starship flow capacitors, and they've given me a Mark V tactical warhead for torpedo damage, and then this for disruptor damage. So wow, I mean, you don't even have to do anything to your ship. You're ready to go. Now the one thing they did not do is they did not give you your skill points. As you can see, no skill points have been spent, and I have 94,000 available because I'm level 20 but none of my skill points have been spent. So in order to be effective in the game, you need to appropriately, you know, use these skill points. Um, so let's do what we're supposed to do and start the tutorial for KDF here. And um, it's all different from what I remember, so I'm, uh, I'm learning just as much as you are. Okay, so... I'm, I'm guessing we need to do follow the path of the warrior. That must be the tutorial. Yes, tutorial, honor bound. Kapla, you have completed your training and are ready to command a ship in service. Well, I didn't do any training, but if it says I completed it, then okay. <laughs> Alright, first you need a crew. I need to speak to the sparring master to find brave and skilled officers willing to fight by my side. I need to seek out be a locha, the sparring master at the warrior's hall, and then I will get an engineering officer candidate, a science officer candidate, and a tactical officer, and then I even get to choose another one. So I'm going to get four bridge officers just from doing the tutorial. Holy crap. That like totally, you know, does everything you need right here at the beginning. Um, so I need to scout uh, the uh, Spartan Master, be a Locha, so accept that. And now we just have to find her, and she's actually right here. You start out right in front of her, so... <laughs> well, there you go, Sparring Master, be a Locha. Talk to Sparring Master. 
Welcome to the ranks of Klingon warriors. I know your heart burns to battle the enemies of the Empire, but only a fool would command a ship with no crew. Um, yeah, there's some nice scars you got there. I know a group of young warriors, much like yourself, who also yearn to earn glory and honor in combat. They seek a great leader to fight alongside. Tell me, are you that leader? I am the best warrior you'll ever see. Are you a child? You go into battle with the skills you need to win. I won't allow that. You need to train before you're ready to fight. Press K to open your skills window. Okay. So she's not going to let you go any farther until you spend your skill points. So let's do that. Um, that's good that they, uh, you know, tell you you need to do that. All right, starship attack patterns. Um, this is if you're going to use attack pattern alpha, beta, delta, or omega. And I'm not a tactical officer, and I'm not probably not going to be using many of those attack patterns. Um, although I could, but. Um, Starship weapon training, I definitely want max weapons. Driver coil, sure, let's go ahead and max that for now. Starship batteries, no. Hole repair, yes. Flow capacitors, a skilled cruiser shipment. Shield and energy drain abilities, no. But shield emitters, yes. Yes, I want that. Demolitions. The skill improves all ground, explosive, and related abilities. Chroniton, transphasic, or orbital strike. Eventually, I'll be using orbital strike. And weapon proficiency. Yeah, definitely that. Okay, and now that second tier opened up. We still have 40,000 to spend. Starship energy weapons. Oh, yeah. And projectile weapons, yep. Um, okay, warp core efficiency, definitely. And then that maxes us out. Um, here we go. All spent. I don't want to spend any more on this column, really. I'm good. I'm good with that. Alright. Now, let's talk to her. A quick learner. I like that. You could be a great leader, but first you must prove yourself. This is the Hall of the Warrior, Hall of Warriors. The best fighters in the Klingon Empire come here to test their skills. Defeat some of the officers we have here, and I'll consider assigning you a crew. All right. So basically, we're gonna have to fight some people here, and um, of course, it's the Klingon way. You gotta fight for your right to join my crew. <laughs> When you're ready to begin, challenge any of the officers in the hall. Do not hold back when you are fighting. Use all of your heart and skill. But remember, an honorable warrior faces his enemies here with only his blade or his hands. Fighting with a batleth requires more skill than merely vaporizing your enemy with a disruptor. Alright, energy weapons are disabled in the warrior's hall. Use your fists or a batleth. Alright, so we have to fight with a batleth. So let's get our Batleth out, and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and expand that, all right. All right, now basically you see how they all have eyes above their head. We can talk to any of them and fight anybody we want. So pick out somebody and fight them. And uh, the Gorn are probably the hardest, so um, let's actually talk to uh, the Heavy Ranger. Prepare to defend yourself. Enemy targets on sensors. There's a combo move right there. That was pretty easy, actually. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, one down. How many did she say I need? Oh, I guess that was it. Just one. I could do more than that. Alright, now talk to her. You're not showing me your best, Captain Fluffy. 
I won't let any officer here serve under a captain who is afraid. Use all of your force and skill. This is battle. We are not weak like the Federation. We do not hesitate to shed blood. Return to the ring and defeat another fighter. Prove your worth to your future bridge officers that will serve on your crew. Alright, now I gotta fight somebody else. Let's fight this dude here. Fight! Oh crap. They don't really fight back too much. Quite easy, actually. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk to her again. I see the fire in your heart. There's somebody else doing the tutorial. I see the fire in your heart. You are a strong warrior. Any officer in the Empire would be honored to serve at your side. These three bridge officers are the best candidates in their respective fields of expertise. Tactical, science, and engineering. They are warriors and they will serve you. Alright, so I get an engineering, a science, a tactical, and then I get to pick something else. Well, I already have a... I'm an engineer, and then I already have an engineer. It actually would be good to have another tactical, because on the ships that you mainly fly in, um, for KDF, um, you have a lot of tactical slots. Alright, there you go. Awesome. Now there's my bridge officers. I can go ahead and tell them to join me. They're not the greatest bridge officers. They're like common, you know. They're not, they're not that awesome. But um, two of them. There's two of them right now. I can uh, commission my other ones as well. There we go. Now I have all my officers commissioned. I have a uh, a Klingon male engineering officer. Klingon female science officer, a Nausicaan male uh, tactical, and then a Gorn male tactical. And obviously you see that they only come with like Mark II weapons, but thankfully with my great inventory they've equipped me with, I can, um, you know, put all that stuff on there and give them better stuff. Uh, also, you want to look at their skills. Um, and yes, yeah, see, I have I have 44,000 uh, bridge officer skills already available. So what you want to do is make sure they have the powers that you want them to have, and then go spend your skill points on them. Don't forget that. That's very important. All right, now let's talk to her again. Um, all right, now we have another tutorial called Lighting the Way. Be careful. The first city can be tricky, but it also has everything you need. Report to Lieutenant B. Amara. She will help you get your bearings here. Talk to Lieutenant Bamara in the personnel area of Kronos. Of course, Kronos is the um, planet, the world of the Klingons, their home world. That's where we are. First city is like their biggest city. It's like uh, basically where you're going to do everything at and we're on first city on their planet right now. So um, this next tutorial basically helps you find your way around first city because it can be confusing. All you get is skill points for it. No rewards, just skill points, but it will help you find your way around the city. So go ahead and do it and then we'll exit the Hall of Warriors. And then we'll be in first, right, in first city. Alright. So this is where it starts you out. This is actually the barracks, I think. So... personnel area, yeah. So, uh, before I talk to who I need to talk to, I'm just going to come out and show you guys what First City looks like. Um, I believe this is the barracks or something, we'll see. Yeah, that was the barracks. I was correct, yay. Okay, so this is First City. You can see there's the sky up there, and um, it's actually pretty big. If you open the map, um, 
It's not circular like um, ESD on the Federation side, basically on Earth Space Dock. You just go in a circle and you can find everything. But this place is laid out in squares and it's all over the place. So you can get lost and sometimes, you know, it's hard to figure out where stuff is at. But um, basically you've got like the main hall, hall in there and that's where your main contact is going to be for your first missions, I believe. Um, down this way, you'll find the exchange um, down that door there. The transporter room right here will take you to um, the ship dock, your ship docking area where you can do all your ship stuff at, and also to the academy, which is in a different place. Um, this way down here takes you to other areas like the markets and stuff where you can um, buy all your goodies and stuff like that. Um, and then through there, it's like crafting and just, there's other stuff through there. Um, so basically that's the, ar the areas you need to explore. But we need to find Lieutenant Mara in the personnel area. And I don't know where that's at. It might be back in here. Oh, a lag there. See, this might be her. Oh yeah, that's her, okay. So the personnel area is kind of like here. This is where you can, um, well, they've changed it. Oh no, they haven't. Oh, this is where you can change your fleet settings if you're in a fleet. Right here is where, yeah, you should be able to train your skills. Uh, your captain respect, basically, which is this stuff right here. If you wanted to um, respect your skills, you need a uh, token, and right now I have four, and I can respect my captain skills.